Hey guys, well I can't tell you how tired I am of making videos about the mount instead of about astrophotography. Uh, but here it is again, and I do this because it, maybe there's something in here that's uh, potentially or will be potentially useful to you down the road. Um, another presentation discussion about the uh, free play I have in the right ascension axis. I thought I had the problem fixed. Uh, it wasn't. And just as a reminder, here's what that free play looks like in an unloaded or lightly loaded configuration. So that easy play back and forth um, when fully loaded turns out to be kind of a, a low frequency vibration. Um, I tried to adjust it. I thought I had adjusted it. I went outside, uh, set up a system with a, a in a low mass configuration. I took the uh, SCT off and I just had the guide scope. And here are the guiding results. Absolutely horrific. All right. Significant excursions, plus and minus uh, five arc seconds or so. Um, and this is it trying to guide. It just couldn't do it. Uh, it I, I, I gather, uh, but don't know, uh, what is happening is that as a gear tooth engages, um, there is more resistance than uh, there should be, which allows the guide star to drift off in right ascension. And then finally, uh, the enough torque develops that it overcomes that um, resistance and it hurries to catch up so to speak and the guide star drifts the other way and that process just continues uh, over and over again. This this picture of the right ascension uh, error and this is from a guide log uh, that I, I acquired that night uh, looks like this regardless of whether I'm guiding or not. So in other words this seemed to be a, a, a characteristic within uh, the gears and the gear mesh the way I had adjusted them and perhaps obviously I did something uh, wrong to create this kind of a picture. So I quickly brought the system in and decided if I have this kind of behavior going on uh, there must be something in the way the the gears are interacting with each other it should be detectable with an accelerometer so I went back to look at the data that I had collected uh, back in 2015 the mount was about one year old at this time I had put accelerometers up here on the uh, top uh, dovetail bar. Uh, just in tracking mode, deck motor was not uh, operating. We weren't obviously in daylight. We weren't tracking any uh, guide stars, so there's no tracking, uh, no uh, auto guiding going on. But uh, what you can see here is there's a strong, uh, and this is a, a time frequency plot. Basically, it just takes all the vibration and just breaks it down into short time links and then looks at the frequency content and then the color uh, gives us some hint as to the strength of the of the uh, vibration uh, vibration level and so blue or black represents low vibration greens or immediate level gr vibration and uh, the reds and and these dark maroon which looks like black uh, is actually the um, high vibration so there's a a, a high vibration at about 11 hertz that is continuous for this five minutes of data that I acquired. There's also this little uh, mound here at about 7 hertz, which is this. Now remember that because we're going to come back to that in a minute. I think that's important. Um, and then there's some uh, vibration associated with just gears meshing, the kind of thing you might expect in a mechanical system with moving parts. Um, so this is what the mount looked like before any hyper tuning, before any adjustments that I made. And so I want to be able to get back to something that looks like this. All right. I want, if this, if what I'm seeing here represents a properly performing mount, then I want to reproduce this. And surely, um, whatever is causing this would show up in here as it and be very quite obvious departure from what we're seeing in this, in this picture. So, with this as a baseline, I set up the system in the house this time, so there's no wind, no breeze, uh, but I have all the load on uh, the system. I have the uh, corrector plate covers here and the lens cover. There's no imaging cameras for obvious reasons, not doing any imaging, uh, but all the mass is basically present. Um, I've mounted a couple of accelerometers. This accelerometer is basically in line with the uh, 
uh, deck axis and this one is uh, forward about where it was in the 2015 data. I'm mostly interested in what's going on in pure RA motion which is this accelerometer cables. These are little blue cables coming off of the accelerometer cables. They come down, dangle down on the floor over here and then get plugged into a data acquisition module that in turn plugs in via USB into the computer and I use this to uh, to acquire data and uh, uh, to save the data just for future analysis and uh, basically I, I do structural dynamics in my uh, in the uh, daylight hours and um, so I have access to all this <clears throat> equipment and I wouldn't expect you know the typical person to go out and buy this to do what we're talking about here so I set this thing up indoors it's balanced uh, in both deck and RA even though there's no deck motion per se uh, but this is this is the configuration that I made future adjustments to the first thing I did was to try to re go back and set the uh, get rid of that uh, that interference that appeared to be present in that earlier guide log data, and then I just left the system running for seven hours, tracking inside, obviously no guiding. I left the house about five p.m. We left the dishwasher running, <coughs> and while the uh, while the uh, mount was tracking, uh, but basically there's the tracking is going on during this period here and here but this high vibration period is coming from the dishwasher. The dishwasher is about 10 feet away it generates vibration into the slab which propagates over to the uh, legs of the of the uh, mount the tripod and then up into the accelerometer so that's what we're seeing here and then we came home around 11:15, went to see a baseball game uh, I played around doing some fast uh, rate 9 slews back and forth just to see how the motor sounded um, but basically, I want to focus on this because this really tells the tale of what's the fundamental problem here. This is that area zoomed in on. Now, what happened here is we came home, closed the door about 30 feet away. The vibration generated by closing the door traveled through the slab 30 feet, up through the legs of the tripod and into the accelerometers. And then what you can see here is that little tiny bit of vibration uh, triggered a what is essentially a one hertz mode, a one hertz vibration, which is that free play mode. Now, with all the mass on board, it's about one hertz. So just the slightest bit of disturbance causes the uh, OTA to swing a bit back and forth uh, in right ascension, which is impossible to guide out because in effect, the the, the OTA, the, the right ascension axis, isn't connected to anything. Uh, it's kind of bouncing between um, gear teeth essentially. Uh, so there's there's no way to guide this out and when you convert this into the frequency domain, so now we go from the time domain down here into frequency, you can see this shows up as a peak here at about one-ish hertz. All right. Uh, now here, uh, not surprisingly, is that roughly 11 hertz uh, right ascension mode. So this is kind of a, a vibration mode of the system. It's characteristic. It's uh, perfectly legit. Um, it, it kind of is it has to do with the mass that's on the counterweight bar combined with the stiffness in the uh, gear, our right ascension gearbox and, and its connection to the housing. And then over here you have just operating noise of gears uh, moving past one another and contacting each other, etc. Uh, it's what you would expect from, a, from an operating machine. So, but this guy is the problem. These guys out here, they don't bother me from a guiding perspective. All right, this thing is the major source of irritation that I'm trying to get rid of. All right, well, I did a tap test um, before I tore down the system or made any further adjustments. And, and just so you know what a tap test looks like, here's a little brief video of that. You can see motion there, it's about uh, a cycle per second, roughly one hertz. I'll show you how that shows up in the accelerometer data. So after I did the tap test, and you can see that, that very slow sway motion back and forth, that's this motion that I've circled here. That's what I'm trying to get rid of. This I'm not going to get rid of. The 10 or 11 hertz mode is just a property of how the structure is built. Um, and that's, again, not an issue at all. So then I made adjustments, uh, again, to the uh, worm gear spacing, but obviously this time I have, I'm, I'm fully loaded 
the mass uh, of the system is what I image with. And here's what I did got after I did a uh, tap test with that. Now this annoying high vibration at these low frequencies is more or less gone and it's replaced with a sharper peak but at a much higher frequency around 8ish hertz. Now that's good news because that may mean that I've I've gotten rid of the free play that's causing me a problem and I've established a connection uh, a, a stronger mechanical connection that does allow me to guide through this. All right. After setting that up, I just let the uh, OTA track, let the mount track for a full 12 hours. So it'll go through the full 100, 180 degrees of, of motion just to see how, uh, if there's any telltale signs of, of problems down the, uh, down the way here. Now, I started off with the OTA on the east side if you will of the meridian um, so the counterweight bar is horizontal at this time four hours later it's about 30 degrees off of vertical and what you can see if you can barely pick up this line here that's that 10 hertz uh, or 11 hertz uh, right ascension mode that sh that should be there here is that little bit of that uh, that that eight, that 8 hertz call it the free play mode it just shows up briefly probably when the gears uh, mesh a little tighter and maybe grind a little more producing a, a little more internal disturbance that excites that behavior but just shows up briefly and then goes away. Meanwhile there's these other two operating gear modes and you can see there's a significant drift here. Um, I don't think I'm that concerned about it but I think what this is saying is that there is uh, some imperfection in how the gears are meshing which is to be expected and there's some slight mass imbalance which is also to be expected. Uh, now, continuing on from here, we have the OTA 30 degrees on once uh, 30 degrees, I should say the counterweight bar 30 degrees off of vertical. It continues to rotate until it's um, 30 degrees off the vertical on the other side. And you can see this, this uh, uh, for lack of a better term, this 30 hertz signal. It comes in and then now it starts to go away again. So this is probably where it's at perfect balance. Um, effect somewhere in this zone here because these you can see how we go from a behavior uh, like this it gets to a minimum in this region which is about when the counterweight bar is vertical more or less and then it starts to drift apart again again we still see that 10 hertz mode not an issue and then finally from 30 uh, degrees off of vertical um, we continue on until the counterweight bar is uh, horizontal again but the OTA is on the opposite side of the mount uh, and again we have the continuing 10 uh, 11 Hertz mode here not a problem uh, 30 Hertz is now disseminating uh, less vibration associated with it um, perhaps there's less contact less grinding of gears at this point I'm not sure um, but basically here are my observations from this the 11 Hertz uh, are a gear housing mode is present throughout the motion which is fine I expect that uh, that 8 Hertz I'll call it the stiffened uh, free play mode this is the one I'm, I'm it was 1 Hertz that I'm trying to get rid of never never fully get rid of it but stiffening it up like this is is what I'm after uh, is barely present um, but only visible a little bit when it's when the OTA is over here um, there is significant uh, variation in that 30 Hertz gear noise tone. I think it's probably normal for an imperfect system uh, so I don't think this is a cause for uh, concern uh, so far. <laughs> so I've, I've had it set up and operating in the house and haven't done any imaging and, and uh, so it remains to be seen how this will actually work. But let's go back and compare the data, the vibration data from 2015 to today. So the red curve is the data that I collected back in 2015 the normally normal operating characteristics of the mount and the blue represents what I have today now obviously a big difference is uh, there's a big uh, mound here a response here at around 7 Hertz uh, and the the uh, RA gear mode gear housing mode is much stronger than it is now uh, the vibration levels associated which is gears operating and grinding against each other is much less now but the mount has been hyper tuned so I would expect some benefit from from that in terms of reducing noise but 
this thing is interesting and I wonder if the uh, tap test that I did and this data that came from that tap test if, if that's not in fact what this mound here is now when I did the test in 2015 I was outside so the slightest bit of wind could have caused motion that's okay um, as long as it's at this very high relatively high frequency so I'm hoping that this and this is an indication that I have s adjusted the RA worm gear spacing so that I am essentially back to what it was uh, before in, the, in its original configuration when I was able to track uh, quite a bit more effectively than I have been lately. Uh, I also am not seeing anything in the vibration signature that gives me any sense that there's something unusual that might have produced this a couple of days ago and so I'm I'm hoping uh, that maybe just maybe uh, I've finally eliminated the free play and the binding uh, but you know time will tell and and I'll need to get outside with it before I can prove that so what do we learn well the RA free play uh, in a fully loaded configuration shows up as a low frequency vibration and the slightest disturbance whether wind or uh, vibration coming through the ground will trigger it and cause the motion of the right ascension motion that uh, is impossible to guide out uh, I can't eliminate that uh, that mode or that free play by by simply balancing the uh, the mount or the system east heavy or west heavy because once we start getting in the near vertical configuration there is no east or west uh, I lose all the benefit of having a, uh, a gravity moment from from the imbalance. Um, adjusting the RA and deck worm gear spacing on the CGM is relatively easy to do and there's that video uh, that I have up uh, just at least pointing out what the, the steps are but I think I would recommend doing it fully loaded. I think the instructions I had said you could do it with as little or as much weight as you want but uh, if the indications are here uh, then I think uh, you're probably better off doing it in a fully loaded configuration. Uh, the challenge is knowing, thinking that you might have made the adjustments as I did once, uh, but then realize only after you try the system out uh, that you were farther away than, than where you started from. So it is a bit challenging. It is, it is possible and easy to make adjustments that you can hear the effect on the motor as you slew during the adjustment, um, but knowing knowing when to stop and knowing when you have a good solution is is a bit of a, a challenge uh, after my first attempt failed I decided to pull out the accelerometers and and so that I could get some insight into the tiniest of of self-induced vibration uh, that uh, is generated as the uh, the mount tracks um, the results seem pretty good uh, but again I'm not going to know until I'm actually guiding and imaging and uh, I guess maybe in a week or so the clouds will finally break and I'll get another chance to get out there. Uh, maybe one day <laughs> I'll actually be able to do astrophotography uh, with this system rather than just talk about it as I have been for what seems like six months. All right well I hope uh, I hope some of this information might be useful to you. I hope you don't have to go down this path but if you are having that uh, free play issue I think you can make adjustments to the uh, worm gear spacing. It's just hard to know when you've accomplished your goal. Uh, but it is possible, I think. All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging in there, and I'll talk to you later, hopefully, about astrophotography. See ya.